In a previous episode in this series on Android accessibility, you explored the contents of the accessibility settings screen on your phone. And you learned how different users, who may be deaf or hard of hearing, have motor impairments, or who may be blind or visually impaired, modify the default configuration of an Android device so that they can actually use that device. In our survey of the accessibility settings screen, we came across TalkBack, Switch Access, and Voice Access. These are commonly used accessibility services. And in this talk, you'll learn more about how these services help many users with disabilities interact with apps that you've built. So what exactly are accessibility services? Let's explore that first. Accessibility services are long-running privileged services that provide an alternate way for users with disabilities to interact with Android devices. Or if you prefer, you can think of them as plugins that change the way the UI works on a device for the user. TalkBack is commonly used by blind and visually impaired users. When using TalkBack, users discover content by moving their fingers across the device screen. TalkBack announces the views that are under the finger, and the user can interact with those views using familiar gestures. TalkBack removes the assumption that the user can see, but leans into their ability to hear and touch the screen with precision. When using switch access, a user connects two or more switches to a device. Typically, one switch is used to navigate between the different controls on the screen, and the second switch is used to interact with those controls. When using voice access, the user interacts with the screen entirely using voice commands. Both switch access and voice access remove the assumption that the user can actually touch the screen. So what does all this mean for you, the app developer? Do you have to write multiple versions of your app, one for users who aren't using any assistive technology, one for TalkBack users, another for switch access users, yet another for voice access users, and so on? Fortunately, you don't. Accessibility on Android is easier than that. You write just one app, and the framework takes care of providing the information needed by different accessibility services so that end users can properly use your app. OK, I admit that sounds a little magical. How does this all work? Let's talk about Android's interaction model. When a user interacts with a device, you can divide all interactions as one, the device presenting information to the user, showing things like text, buttons, images, etc., and two, the user performing actions on the device, like pressing buttons, swiping, scrolling, etc. The user's actions cause more information to be presented in response, and the cycle continues. Users with accessibility needs benefit from having that information presented in different ways and having alternate methods of interacting with your apps. Remember, you don't talk directly to each accessibility service. Instead, you write just your one app, and the Android framework communicates with the accessibility services for you. Most of the time, if you're using standard views, like text views and buttons, they are built to support accessibility out of the box. This means that the majority of the time, these standard views will present information and allow users to perform actions using their accessibility services of choice with little effort on your part. Here's an example of interacting with a switch using TalkBack. As you're using TalkBack, you move to different elements in the screen, and there's some text read out to the user. For this switch, TalkBack reads, also vibrate for calls, off, switch, double tap to activate. So it gives you four things. One, the label. Two, the state of the control. Three, the control type. And four, the action to interact with that control. This is presented in a pretty standardized way that TalkBack users are familiar with. And when I double tap anywhere in the screen, TalkBack replies, on. For standard widgets like switches, all this comes for free. Now. There are some situations where the framework can't just automatically tell TalkBack what to say. Images are a good example of this. The framework won't know how to interpret these three lines and explain this fab to the user. So it will say something unhelpful, like unlabeled button. So sometimes you need to fill in the gaps like this for the accessibility framework. And you do that by using accessibility APIs. In this case, you would add a content description in the form of a localized string that would describe the purpose of the button. With that in place, the framework will relay that information 
to the different accessibility services who can then surface it to the end user. In the course of this series, we'll look at different accessibility APIs that you can use to provide functionality for end users who are interacting with your apps using different accessibility services. Okay, let's summarize. In this step byte, you've discovered a high level view of how accessibility works in Android. Uh, you've seen how users interact with your apps in different ways and often by the use of accessibility services. You've discovered that most built-ins work for accessibility by default. And you've learned that sometimes you have to use accessibility APIs to help the framework convey your app semantics to the end user. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos.